If you just like pureed everything up, all your turkey and your mashed potatoes and your cranberry, it's kind of like what this color would be. Maybe it's kind of gross, but I kind of like it. It is my absolute favorite holiday because it is a day filled with friends and family and food and football and of course, a little wine. So I'm giving you my breakdown on how I handle Thanksgiving or even Friendsgiving when I've got a little bit of planning to do, some people coming over and of course, I headed to my favorite store to do a little damage in the way of all my goodies here and the wine. So I'm gonna take you through a few of the things that I got, a few tips that you're definitely gonna want for Thanksgiving day. And then of course, I'll take you through all of the wines that we're tasting and I'm serving at Thanksgiving. My first biggest tip, this is the thing that I always tell people to do, is do not break out your wine glasses. This is a no-no on Thanksgiving unless you've got a few special bottles, which occasionally I do have. Today is all about simplicity, and this table is a sixth of what it's gonna be later. Tackle on all of those hands that are gonna be grazing throughout, and you've got yourself a lot of chaos in the way of stems. And so for that reason, I love to serve wine in short tumblers like this. I don't even like full wine tumblers. You know why? Because today is a marathon, not a sprint. This is about tasting lots of different things, having a lot of fun, and a lot of people come over earlier in the day, so this is a long extended window of drinking wine. So I like to keep the ounceage a little shorter, if you know what I mean, and that really helps to to minimize any damage that might arise later. For the wine, so much going on on my table. I'm sure it's the same at yours. A lot of different flavors, a lot of savory, a lot of sweet, a lot of spice. For that reason, we like to have a lot of different options. The way that I did this today is I actually just stuck with one particular brand that I think does a really good job of showing on the label what the wine is going to taste like. Chardonnay, you've gotta have a white. Thanksgiving is a lot of rich foods, a lot of butter, a lot of fats, a lot of richness. And so you want a lot of weight, but the other thing that you want is a little bit of acidity. You want some brightness to handle all of the different things that are happening on the table. I don't like to do anything that's gonna be incredibly oaky, incredibly rich, and so for that reason, this photograph Chardonnay from the Central Coast is a fantastic option for a few reasons. The Central Coast tends to be a place where you get a lot of minerality. It also tends to be a place where you get a lot of sea breeze, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of citrus, and that's gonna to help to brighten things up while also allowing it to match the food. You're gonna wanna get this on the colder side, so do get this in the fridge for about an hour before you're gonna serve it. You don't have to get it super cold. Don't feel like it needs to sit in an ice bucket during dinner. It's totally fine out on the table just like this. Gonna be in the 10 to $15 range for all of these, so this really fits what I'm looking for in terms of flavor profile, but also in terms of budget. I am gonna be tasting out of a wine glass today just so that you can see exactly what it looks like. And then of course, you can do whatever you'd like at home in terms of tumblers. I also often keep some of those espresso tumblers. Those are really great options as well if you don't wanna go with the amber color. Immediately, it just like smells like sunshine and the beach, you know, sort of that sea wash, that gorgeous minerally air, a little bit of oyster shell. And I love that the label sort of gives you hints of that, right? You look at it, it's a boat floating on the water and immediately you're just sort of taken to that place, to that moment in time that feels relaxed. That's how I want everyone to feel on Thanksgiving, relaxed. It shouldn't be a day of stress. It does take a lot of planning in order to make that happen. But once you're in the thick of it, once you're sitting down, enjoying dinner, watching football, whoever your favorite team is, go Eagles. Once you're sitting down and doing that, it should just be like gravy on the table. I'm seeing in front of me right now, 
macaroni and cheese, potatoes, and green beans, and I'm excited to have this wine with all three of those dishes. This is gonna really work nicely throughout. It's also gonna be great if you've got something ahead of the actual dinner, like behind me I have some snacks here. There's some brie bites, there's some spinach and artichoke bites that I grabbed from their freezer section. This wine is gonna work really, really well with that. The other thing that I really like about this wine is for people who love Sauvignon Blanc, things that are gonna have more of that citrus, and for people who typically love Chardonnay, more of that apple rich, sort of unctuous kind of wine, this sort of falls in the middle for both camps of people that love both types of white wine. All right, let's move to Pinot Noir. There is one wine to win them all. One wine that fits the table every single time on Thanksgiving. The wine that I think sees most tables at Thanksgiving. It's got to be Pinot Noir. And of course, Pinot you can find all over the world in several different places. But I love the fact that we are doing one from California for a few different reasons. One, I love drinking American wines on Thanksgiving. I think it just feels right. Two, because we have so many different flavors on the table, ranging from really savory to even really, really sweet. Think those sweet potatoes with the marshmallows, all the toasty like pecans on there. Think of that dish and then think of the most savory thing and you're gonna wanna amplify all the way up to that sweet potato. In order for that to happen, you've gotta have something with a little bit of ripeness. So oftentimes, Pinot Noir is from places like Burgundy that have a little bit more of that savoriness that lean into more of those mushroomy flavors can not actually stand up to those dishes. And so for that reason, I like to be in places like California that give you more of that ripeness. Now the trick here is to not go super, super ripe because of course we still have all of those savory dishes to deal with. So we want something with freshness and acidity that's gonna balance everything out. We want something that's going to highlight the savoriness. We want something that's going to cut through some of that fat. Doesn't it kind of look like Thanksgiving almost in a glass? Like if you just like, pureed everything up, all your turkey and your mashed potatoes and your cranberry. It's kind of like what this color would be. Maybe it's kind of gross, but I kind of like it. Light, but still packed with flavor. That's the key, right? And again, just like the Chardonnay, take a peek at this label. This screams to me, ease. I'm in upstate somewhere. I'm at my cabin relaxing. And I don't know, maybe I'll go for a bike ride later. Who knows? Probably not though, because they ate a lot of turkey. I love it. It's gonna tie everything together. It's also gonna fit the bill for people who like light body wines and also be a great wine for people who want a little bit more intensity and richness. But for those of you who are gonna definitely need something with a little bit more body because we know there are plenty of people out there that are not gonna drink a light bodied wine, I need to have a full bodied option on the table. And so that brings us to our next wine right now. Cabernet Sauvignon, not always an ideal choice for Thanksgiving because it tends to be too big, too many tannins. We're dealing mostly with turkey unless you're one of those camps that has a little beef, has other proteins on the table. Turkey tends to be a little bit too light for big, heavy Napa cabs. There are ways to make it happen though, and this is why I love this particular choice of Cabernet Sauvignon coming from the North Coast. One of the ways that you can have Cabernet on the table, have a fully bodied wine, is grab it from a slightly cooler region. North Coast tends to be a place that offers freshness. Just like the Central Coast, we're leaning into some cooler areas. So you're not gonna have a massive Cabernet, but you are gonna have something that's gonna give someone the impression of that. And that's really what I want, because I don't wanna overpower the food. The food is really the shining star at the table. Thanksgiving Day, we love wine. Don't get me wrong, I'm a wine person. I look forward to what I'm drinking on Thanksgiving every single year, but. It really is all about the food today. We wanna let that shine, right? We work so hard to make that happen. This wine is all sorts of relaxed but intense at the same time. It is muscular, it's rich, it's vibrant, but it also has this sort of like ease about it. Every time I go back to it, it gives me more of that 
gorgeous red, kind of like that demi glass sauce, right? Something that you would just sort of drizzle on your turkey. If you had reduced a little bit of that stock, you'd get something that's sort of rich, but also really lively that sort of coats the turkey and gives it more of that intensity that we want. Mm. I love the label on this. Again, I think this is like giving the impression, look at the van driving down the road, this like red rock situation, ease, comfort, Americana, all of these like images that we want on Thanksgiving day. I love that all of these wines are giving me that. I love that the wines are really speaking for themselves. Oftentimes I'll tell most people, ignore the labels. They really don't mean anything, but I think in this case, they've done a really good job of highlighting what's inside the bottle via what's on the label. All of these wines totally speak for themselves in the glass, but I would be remiss not to mention the fact that they are all 90 plus rated, which I have to say in this price point is really, really hard to do. So thumbs up for that, thumbs up for price, thumbs up for flavor, and thumbs up for working with all of these dishes that are about to be on my table. I wish you and your family and your friends a great, great, wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you for the holidays. It's coming around the corner. Cheers.